Here's the question that inspired this video. Why are people recommending the use of D-Shot 300 with these new flight controllers that have the BMI 270 gyro on it? And why does KISS recommend the use of D-Shot 2400? Uh, the answer to that question is really freaking interesting and reveals the differing priorities between the Betaflight developers who made the recommendation to use D-Shot 300 and the KISS developer, developers, developer, who prioritizes performance and latency over everything. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're gonna learn something today. In order to answer this question, we gotta start with the PID loop. And the PID loop is the main program action that the flight controller takes. And put very simply, what the flight controller does during the PID loop is it looks at the stick positions coming in through the receiver. It looks at the movement of the quadcopter, uh, mostly from the gyro, and it compares those two things. It asks the question, is the quadcopter doing what it's being commanded to do? And then it calculates new outputs for the motors that cause the motors to speed up or slow down so as to cause the uh, quadcopter to do what it's being commanded to do. So the main input to the PID loop is the gyro and the stick positions. And the main output is a new value for each of the motors as to how fast that motor should be spinning. Now, it probably won't surprise you to learn that if the PID loop is running too slow, then the quadcopter isn't gonna fly very well. If the PID loop was updating 10 times a second, just a preposterously slow number, then your stick positions would only be updated 10 times a second, and the motor outputs would only be updated 10 times a second, and the quadcopter just would not fly well, if at all. Uh, so we run the PID loop fast. We run it at thousands of times per second, typically, uh, something like between two kilohertz and eight kilohertz. But there's a limit on how fast we can run the PID loop, and that is the gyro chips sampling rate. And the reason that the gyro chips sampling rate is the upper bound on how fast it makes sense to run the PID loop is that uh, the gyro can only spit out data that fast. Let's say we have a gyro chip whose maximum sampling rate is eight kilohertz. It will give us 8,000 new readings of the movement of the quadcopter per second. It doesn't make sense to run the PID loop faster than that because there would be no new information to operate on. So we take the gyro data, we run the PID loop, we calculate new motor outputs, and then we just gotta wait for the next bit of output from the gyro to tell us how the quadcopter is moving. So the faster the gyro can run, the faster the PID loop can run. How does this all relate to D-Shot then? So D-Shot comes in various flavors, D-Shot 150, D-Shot 300, D-Shot 600, all the way up to D-Shot 2400, or maybe the KISS guys have pushed it even further than that. And the difference between those D-Shot flavors is how quickly the signal is transmitted. In other words, it is a faster uh, baud rate, if that means anything to you. It's a faster megabits per second. It's a faster transmission of the signal. And there are two effects of the transmission of the signal being faster that we're gonna touch on in this vi uh, video. One is that the faster signals finish their transmission sooner. It makes sense. If I'm talking way faster, then I'm going to finish the sentence sooner than if I'm talking slower. So D-Shot 2400 will finish transmitting its data to the ESC faster than D-Shot 600, and D-Shot 600 faster than D-Shot 300, and so forth. But the trade-off there is that the faster D-Shot flavors are also more prone to corruption of the signal due to electrical noise. So you have more uh, corrupted data when using higher D-Shots but you have lower latency between the flight controller and the ESC and vice versa. Now there's a relationship between the D-shot speed and the PID loop rate. And that relationship is that the D-shot data must finish transmitting before the completion of the PID loop. So if I have a PID loop that's running at eight kilohertz, the minimum D-shot that I can use is D-shot 600. And the reason for that is that the amount of time that it takes to transmit a D-shot 300 packet is longer than the 12.5 milliseconds, one over 8,000, whatever that works out to. 
it's longer than the amount of time it takes to finish the PID loop. So if you're running DSHOT 300 with an 8K PID loop, you could not finish transmitting the data to the ESC before it was time to start over and do another PID loop. How does the BMI270 gyro come into this? The BMI270 gyro has a maximum refresh rate of only 3.2 kilohertz. And that means that the slowest DSHOT that it can run is DSHOT 300. And the Betaflight developer's philosophy has been to use the slowest DSHOT that you can based on your gyro update rate so you get the cleanest signal with the minimum number of corrupted packets. The Betaflight devs don't really prioritize reducing latency between the flight controller and the ESC because they, if I, well, I might be putting words in their mouth, but I think they feel that the reduction in latency there is so incremental and so marginal that it doesn't really matter and you just wanna get the cleanest packets that you can. On the flip side, the KISS developers seem to really prioritize reducing the latency everywhere that they can. And if they can shave a few microseconds of latency between the flight controller and the ESC by running at a faster DSHOT, they totally do it. And that's why they recommend running at DSHOT 2400. The trade-off, you could argue, is that there's an increased likelihood of corrupted packets uh, due to electrical noise. The reality is very difficult to predict because some quadcopters will be very electrically clean, will not have a lot of electrical noise, and will run DSHOT 2400 uh, with no problems. Other quadcopters will have problems running at the higher DSHOTs, and the problem is that the pilot may not really know. You uh, Could you really notice if 5% of the packets between the flight controller and the ESC were corrupted? That's a really subtle thing, and I think it's gonna be very difficult to figure out. Um, in order to really find the answer to this, the only way to do that would be to log somehow the corrupted packets between the flight controller and the ESC. In Betaflight, at least, you totally can do this with black box. You can, in fact, see the error percent in the motors tab, uh, but I think that probably you'd need to be logging it during actual flight because the situation on the bench with no props and not actually flying is probably going to be a little bit different than the situation in the air. But theoretically, if you were to log and you were to see that at DSHOT 600, you didn't have any errors, you were just at 0% or a very, very low percent of errors, then go for it. You're getting reduced latency, a small amount, and you're basically not losing anything. On the other hand, if you're running at DSHOT 2400 and you're seeing that you're getting a large percent of errors, then it probably would be better to lower that because you're probably gonna do better with a cleaner signal than a slight, on, on the level of microseconds of latency difference. I always set it as low as I can. I am of the philosophy that saving a few microseconds is probably not gonna be noticeable to me and that I just would like the cleanest signal that I can. And that's why you hear me recommend DSHOT 300 whenever you're running a 4K PID loop or a 3.2K PID loop with a BMI270 gyro, DSHOT 600, whenever you're running uh, running an 8K PID loop, if you have a flight controller that can do that. But I'll tell you, when I use KISS, I use DSHOT 2400. And the real reason is that that's what the developers of KISS think is best to do. That's what they have tailored KISS around. And in lieu of absence of evidence to the contrary, I'm just gonna take their word for it and do what they recommend. There you go, that's the answer.